Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Planes are used for various important tasks, from travel to item transportation and even battle. First entering its optional service with the Royal Air Force in 2014, the A400M Atlas took its maiden flight in December 2009. The robust plane employed what the Royal Air Force referred to as a brand new multinational power plant at the time of its inception. Though technological and political issues plagued the development, officials believed in the concept despite delays, and the Atlas eventually initiated a new era of flight lift capability. Originally planned for a release in early 2009, the European Aeronautic Defense and Space Company, or EADS, announced that the aircraft's first delivery would be postponed until 2012, at the earliest. Then deliveries would be maintained for three years after that first flight. However, more issues than expected continued to plague development. At one point during the process, the aircraft was over its desired weight by 12 tons. This meant it would not meet its main performance requirements. Following the announcement, the CEO of the EADS Group said the plane project might be abandoned altogether and that continuing it would make it difficult for the company to break even. However, the plane took to the air at the end of 2009. And even the following issues the manufacturers had to overcome did not stop its success. arrived in service with the Royal Air Force in 2014, so we're still uh, preparing the aircraft for, for operations overseas. Built to provide tactical airlift and strategic oversized lift capabilities, the Royal Air Force says the A400M can carry a 37-ton payload of over 2,000 nautical miles and reach altitudes of up to 40,000 feet. It's operated by two pilots and a weapons system operator. The cockpit flight deck is located at the front of the fuselage, as most of the aircraft's space is saved for carrying cargo. Before each flight, the aircraft is loaded with the cargo for its mission. It can carry as many as 116 fully equipped troops, a variety of vehicles, helicopters, and more. The capabilities of this heavy-duty aircraft go beyond the previously mentioned attributes. At a flight display in Farnborough, this aircraft attempted an unrestricted climb. In order to hit a high altitude quickly, the airplane takes off at a nearly vertical takeoff. The manufacturers of the A400M say the plane can land and take off from any short, soft, or rough, unprepared CBR-6 airstrip under 750 meters. or 2,500 feet when delivering up to 55,000 pounds of cargo.
In contrast to a cargo plane, aircraft like the F-22 Raptor focus more on aerial battles and specific dominance over the skies. First taking flight in September of 1997, the F-22 originally flew under a different name before taking on the F-22A name in December of 2005. The plane was built to have numerous attack capabilities, such as attacking surface targets with a combination of stealth, maneuverability, and more. The United States Air Force refers to it as a critical component of the Global Strike Task Force, as it can move great distances at a rapid pace to defeat threats. the plane can reach Mach 2 speeds while climbing to a height of more than 50,000 feet. Thanks to advancements in low observable technology, the plane has significantly improved its survivability against air-to-air -air and surface-to-air threats, according to the Air Force. In fact, the F-22 brings its stealth into both day and night missions, which helps to both protect itself and Air Force assets. Not every mission is going to be sunny skies and daylight. Sometimes it's going to be during the night. Sometimes it's going to be in bad weather. We, we have to be prepared for anything at all costs. The aircraft was designed to fly for about a lifespan of 8,000 hours, with a thrust of 35,000 pound force. Thanks to the plane's thrust to weight ratio, it can perform a wide variety of unique maneuvers, such as a vertical takeoff. Similar to the A400M Atlas, the F-22 Raptor uses this maneuver to reach heights quickly. Despite what appears to be a strenuous maneuver for the pilot, many of these takeoffs only reach about 5 Gs. However, that doesn't mean these pilots don't reach top speeds. While in the air, the pilot will experience a variety of sensations. Afterburners allow the plane to reach speeds of up to Mach 2, which puts intense strain on the body. Many pilots prepare ahead of time by warming up their bodies through stretches, then putting on their G-suits. Starting to get my blood pressure up, my heart rate going so that I can begin to warm up my muscles so that when I take off and I go right to 5G's and then come back around for a 9G turn, I'm ready to go and I'm at peak performance. These suits are created to keep pilots safe when flying at extreme speeds. Special aircrew flight equipment technicians take care of the suits, making sure they are safe and reliable for pilots when they are in the air.
pilots may wear anything from a helmet, an oxygen mask, a harness, and an anti-G garment while in the air. When the technicians aren't on the road with their team to work with the pilots, they are often back at their Air Force base to continue the inspection of gear and preparation of pilots. Like the suits, pilots must also go through training before taking to the skies. Specifically, G-force training. These pieces of training frequently involve combating loss of consciousness due to the induced G-force. By using a centrifuge, students can experience up to nine Gs, which is nine times the normal force of gravity on Earth. The machine works by spinning pilots around and increasing speed, which in turn increases pressure inside the compartment where the student sits. According to the Air Force Research Laboratory, about 1,200 students can be trained in centrifuge each year. Advanced stages of this simulation require the pilot to wear a G-suit. This simulation quickly inflates and deflates the pneumatic bladders on the suit to make sure everything is in working order. Keep it in your top three. Data collected from the controlled pressure system is then used to determine the suit's function. However, once pilots pass the test, they aren't quite ready for immediate flight. They must first prepare themselves for their mission in the skies by putting on their suits and warming up their bodies. They need to be prepared to take on the intensive pressure that comes with flying an F-22 Raptor. Then, they can begin their flight. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.